Since the early 2000s, China have stolen a mind-boggling $600 billion of American trade secrets every single year. That's a whopping $12 trillion over the last 20 years. Yikes. Whoa, 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 what on earth were they after? Well, in short, everything. They've got spies everywhere from tech firms to the military. So stick with me, try to keep a low profile, then fingers crossed we'll make it out all right. Ready, partner? Good. Let's find out what secrets the Chinese government have been stealing from us. Lord of the Skies. First things first, drop the spy movie nonsense. No gadgets, no public shootouts, and absolutely no smooching any beautiful women. Gross. Sadly, nowadays, spying is almost all conducted with technology, computers, and data. But don't think it's any less shocking. Oh no. In 2007, a Chinese cyber espionage unit called the Technical Reconnaissance Bureau stole heaps of incredibly sensitive U.S. aircraft data before passing that information on to the Aviation Industry Corporation of China. Okay, so China knows how to make a left flange. Big deal. Wrong. These weren't any old aircraft parts. China scooped precious intel on the F-22 Raptor and F-35 Lightning II stealth fighter jets, which have the absolute apex of stealth technology to avoid enemy detection. Fast forward to 2016 and China unveiled their own stealth fighter, the Chengdu J-20. Look familiar? Now, it's not a carbon copy, the J-20 is slightly nearer and longer than the F-35 and has much greater range, internal fuel capacity, and internal weapons capabilities. So what, it's even better? Well, not entirely. We don't know exactly how much of the stolen F-35 technology made it into the J-20. At a guess, though, the sensor fusion and network integration, which are the onboard computer systems that enable aircraft parts to communicate with each other, aren't as advanced as the American aircraft. That's because these took the most time, money, and effort for the U.S. to develop. Well, that's something at least. So what came of the hackers anyway? For the most part, not a lot. But in 2016, Chinese national Su Bin admitted to his part in a years-long espionage program stealing military technical data. He got 46 months in prison for telling Chinese hackers which files to steal and the significance of the stolen information. I don't know about you, but just under four years in prison for jeopardizing prized national security information seems a little lenient, doesn't it? Hmm, let me know down in the comments. Literally same. If you thought China's meddling in military technology ended there, guess again. At a convention in Abu Dhabi in 2017, China unveiled models for their latest naval vessel, and it bears a striking resemblance to American literal combat ships. Just like with the J-20, the Chinese copycat ship isn't an exact replica. The U.S. frigate is 417 feet long, however, the Chinese ship is 50 feet longer with a larger crew capacity and much, much heavier artillery. But all that extra baggage comes at the expense of speed with a max of just 35 knots or 40 miles per hour, opposed to the literal ship's 46 miles per hour. Both ships feature the same Tremarin design with the hull split into three separate parts for better stability in stormy seas. What made this really surprising though was that China had already started producing a similar frigate design, albeit with a monohull, the Type 054A Junkai 2. So why suddenly switch? Well, that's not really clear. It could be that the wider platform provided by the new tri-hull design allows for side-by-side -side aircraft hangars. This might suggest China's new long-term military strategy is to employ more manned and unmanned aircraft. Or maybe they're just trying to better understand the enemy by copying their arsenal. Whatever the reason, it seems like China are trying to close the gap on U.S.'s military advantage. We might still be winning the race for now, but for how long? Who knows? NAB Nukes Boy, this military debacle. Pretty scary, right? Well, strap in, it's about to get a whole lot scarier. In a redacted report released to the public in 1999, U.S. Representative Christopher Cox accused China of using illicit tactics to access information on nuclear weapons. Mm -hmm. Oh, lordy. 
In his report, Cox claimed that China had acquired massive amounts of classified information in a long-term spying campaign over the prior 20 years. China's intercontinental ballistic missiles, or ICBMs, had been seriously lacking compared to American missiles. However, by 1992, China had conducted successful tests on missiles which used modern thermonuclear designs. These designs shrunk hydrogen bombs down so that many can fit atop a single missile and be fired from trucks and other mobile platforms. How China achieved this level of technological advancement, which took the United States decades, millions of dollars, and rigorous testing, is a mystery. Geez, so China just stole it? Well, maybe not. You see, China responded to the report calling it racist and claiming the intel they'd acquired on nuclear weapons was readily available public information. It seems unlikely. I doubt I could walk into my local library and learn how to build a nuclear warhead, but that's not to say it isn't true. And considering no one has ever been formally accused of stealing the information, it's kind of hard to tell who's lying. I mean, let's face it, America's track record of accusing political enemies about weapons of mass destruction in the late 90s and early 2000s hasn't exactly aged well, if you know what I mean. What do you think? Did China nab the nukes or is this another case of the US pointing fingers with no real substance? Let me know in the comments. If you're having trouble telling who the good guy is, let me help you out. It's me! So hit those like and subscribe buttons and you'll keep up to date with all my amazing videos. Wabow! Back into the shadows I go. Life is a Huawei. Okay, let's leave big weapons alone and move on to, uh, the big guns. You've probably heard of Huawei, right? They're a giant Chinese tech corporation who make everything from computers and cell phones to large-scale communication equipment. Now, Huawei aren't the most popular kid on the block. Even though they say they're a private company, no company in China is truly independent of what the government tells them to do. If the Chinese government order Huawei to act in a harmful way, well, let's just say the law's the law. Now, when the UK government built their new 5G network, an estimated 41% of the components came from Huawei. Jeez, are you boys trying to get hacked? Well, in 2020, and with plenty of US encouragement, the UK banned any new Huawei technology from the 5G wireless network and ordered the removal of all Huawei products by 2027. Yikes. And here's me thinking 5G's biggest problem was hacking our brainwaves. <laughs> nah, I'm kidding. Put those foil hats away. Whilst there's no evidence of Huawei currently abusing their position in the network to collect information, it doesn't mean they won't in the future something Britain knows all too well. In 1957, they reached a secret agreement with Ghana's government in waiting to develop encrypted communication systems for them. Ghana lacked the money to do it themselves, so on the face of it, this was a nice move, right? Not quite. Because Britain had developed the code, they knew how the messages were scrambled, so Ghana's private comms were fair game for them to spy on. Darn, that's sneaky. So Britain's only scared now because they did the exact same thing in the past. Seems a little hypocritical to me. And that's because it is. Everybody's out here spying. Even though Huawei were never caught abusing their position in the British network, they're not innocent either. During a 2004 trade show in Chicago, an alleged Huawei spy was caught snooping around a competitor's boots in the middle of the night, taking photos of the insides of the devices. According to the man's ID, his employer was Weihua. Weihua? Huawei? You're kidding. Another 2010 lawsuit claimed former Motorola employees He Chun Kai and Jin Zhang Zhang flew to China in 2003 and gave trade secrets to Huawei CEO Ren Xingfei. How do we know they were trade secrets? Uh, they wrote Motorola Confidential Proprietary on every darn page. Subtle not. These are just two of hundreds of flagrant allegations, but you get the picture. And honestly, I can't see this slowing down anytime soon. Surveillance Socials Unless you've been living under a rock, it's hard to have missed the rise of controversial social media app TikTok. It's literally the most popular app in the world. But in 2023, President Biden threatened to ban TikTok unless their Chinese parent company ByteDance sold it. Man, what's Grandpa Joe got against hitting the gritty? Well, it's not so much what you do on TikTok, but everything TikTok does to you. 
Like many free services, TikTok makes money from advertising, and to tailor adverts, the app needs users' data. No problems there. But they also let third-party trackers, meaning not you or TikTok, aggressively collect users' personal information. Anytime you like, comment, or watch a video, these third-party accounts collect your information. And it doesn't stop there. TikTok also enables them to gather information about your face print, voice, and location data. Scared yet? Well, guess what? All those TikToks you've got sitting as drafts you've never posted, they collect data on those too. And once these third-party sites have your information, it's very hard to know where it goes. Now, reports in August 2021 revealed the Chinese government had taken a 1% stake in ByteDance and one of three board seats controlling the company. This means they have direct access to personal information on the staggering 150 million Americans who use the app every month. That's almost half the population. Whilst TikTok are taking steps to protect US data, who's to say these third-party sites aren't still sharing it? So Sleepy Joe says he's protecting everyday Americans as a matter of national security, but he's also worried that hashtags like military TikTok could provide the Chinese government with heaps of information about our troops. Essentially, what we see as a fun video sharing app has the potential to be a giant spy tool for the Chinese government. Yikes. So do I think our boy Biden is doing a good thing? Nah, <laughs> not quite. This isn't just a TikTok problem. Meta, Google, Microsoft, Apple, all collect vast amounts of user data. It's happening to you right now as you watch this video. The difference is that these companies are American. And American mean good. I think Biden's restricting ByteDance from operating in the US to try and force them into selling TikTok to an American company. That way China's access to the precious data is gone, but the US can access whatever they want. Just like they already do with Meta, Apple, and Microsoft. Ah, the old Uno reverse card. Wait, you actually thought this was about protecting Americans? Nah. Wave goodbye. Ah, Britain. I feel bad for all the times I've bagged on your delectable cuisines. In fact, you're doing all sorts of awesome stuff across the pond. Like, look at this thing. Isn't it cool? Despite appearances, it's not a bomb. It's actually an attenuating wave converter. An attenuating what? Essentially, it's a machine that creates electricity from the movement of the ocean. The joints along the machine move with the shape of the waves, pushing against hydraulic rams as they do so. In turn, those rams pump high-pressure oil through motors that drive electrical generators. The resulting electricity is then fed down a cable to the seabed where it's linked up with the shore. Bish bash bosh, you've got ocean power. How cool is that? Well, it's so cool that in 2011, the Chinese vice premier, alongside a delegation of 60 people, traveled to the Pelamis facility in Edinburgh, Scotland, where this machine was made. Huh? Seems a little out of the way for a work trip. But wait, it gets weirder. Just two months after the vice premier's visit, there was a break-in at Pelamis Wave Power and five laptops were stolen from the facility. Initially, the crime was written off as there was no way to figure out who did it and there wasn't any great loss. That is, until a few years later when pictures started surfacing of China's brand new attenuating wave machine, Hai Long One. And I'll be damned if that's not the Pelamis machine in some fancy DLC skin. Now, China strongly denies outright stealing it. They claim that the Hai Long One is based on independent research by China's shipbuilding corporations and that there are huge differences in the design, appearance, and structure of the machine. Hmm, not the my uneducated ass. China might as well have pulled it out of the ocean, strapped it to a ship, and sailed away with it. And it seems more than a little sus that a high-ranking Chinese diplomat would visit some random factory in Scotland just weeks before it was broken into. Have China pulled another swift one on us here? Let me know what you think in the comments. Ghost in the net. Let's get one thing straight. America and Britain aren't the only targets of Chinese spying tactics. Oh, heck no. In 2009, a massive surveillance program was uncovered which targeted important individuals, organizations, and governments all around the world. It was named Operation Ghost Net. Dang, that's a cool name. In total, a shocking 1,295 computers across 103 countries were found to be compromised by a Trojan horse, a malicious software that gains access to a computer by disguising itself as something else. 
Once inside, a hacker can remotely monitor the computer's activity. Now, this software was initially discovered in India at the office of the Dalai Lama, the foremost spiritual leader of the Galug Tibetan Buddhism, who was exiled from China in 1959. After that, compromised computers were discovered in the embassies of South Korea, Indonesia, Thailand, Taiwan, Portugal, Germany, and, whew, Pakistan. In other words, everywhere. When cybersecurity experts trace the origins of the virus, the IP address, which identifies any device within a network, traced it to Hainan. And it just so happens that Hainan is home to the 3PLA. China's military department specializing in computer network operations and intelligence. Whoa. So what were they after? Yeah, that's the tricky part. There's really no way of knowing what kind of intel was gathered. In fact, it's not clear if this was even a government-run program. It could have been a patriotic citizen. Obviously, the Chinese government aren't admitting to anything, but that only makes me all the more suspicious. Spy in the Sky Okay, Wisecrack, now you know a little bit about how to conduct a spying operation. How would you go about seizing intelligence? Hacking into the mainframe? Smuggling restricted goods out of the country? I bet you wouldn't say fly an enormous balloon over the country in plain sight, but that's exactly what China did. In early 2023, a giant spy balloon was shot down under orders from President Biden after it was spotted flying over North American airspace. China apologized and said it was a stray weather balloon that blew out of control. With limited self-steering capabilities, the balloon had ventured into areas it shouldn't have. Phew, a simple mistake. Ha, <laughs> if only. See, the balloon China said got shot down and the balloon that actually got shot down couldn't be more different. Typically, weather balloons are about 20 feet wide. However, a colossal 200 foot of soggy balloon was pulled from the wreckage and beneath the balloon was a huge technology bay about the length of two to three buses, full of sensors and aerials for transmitting data. It probably looked something like this satellite. Interesting. Either China was trying to check the weather on Neptune, or they were lying. Again. Later, it transpired that the lack of self-steering capabilities was also a lie. The balloon had rudders and propellers that were more than suited to helping it move great distances. It really makes me wonder how valuable was the information this balloon was collecting that they'd risk getting caught and losing an expensive piece of tech. Or maybe the balloon was just a distraction for something much more serious. Ah! Burgled biodata. Isn't this all some political mumbo jumbo? Come on, should I really care what governments are stealing from each other? Well, here's something to really give you the willies. According to reports published in 2021, China might have compromised a huge amount of biodata on everyday Americans. From hacking healthcare companies to the smart technology in our homes, they've been very busy. Seriously, up to 80% of US adults have had their healthcare information and DNA profiles accessed by the Chinese government. Cripes. DNA contains your unique genetic code that makes you, well, you as well as loads of sensitive information like what dangerous diseases you're susceptible to, including certain types of cancer. On the one hand, China's breach could pose no threat. Due to their aging population, cancer in China is up 80% in 30 years and they might intend to use the stolen DNA data to try and develop a cure. It wouldn't be the first time China has done something like this. Zhao Song Zheng, a medical student in Boston, Massachusetts, was caught smuggling stolen vials of cancer cells in his sock, which he'd pinched from a lab. And another researcher, Hua Jun Sao, stole three vials of a possible cancer drug from a professor's desk at the Medical College of Wisconsin. However, on the other hand, this gets really tricky. Whilst this information could help develop cures for future diseases, China has a very sketchy history around using DNA samples to identify and persecute the Oiga people, an ethnic minority native to Xinjiang. And this is the really scary thing. In the wrong hands, the same DNA data that can be used to save lives can abet taking them too. Ugh, makes me kinda angsty. It's corn. You know, I always thought the life of international espionage would be a little more exotic than staring at computers all day. Still, look on the bright side. You could be like Chinese citizen Mo Hai Long 
In 2016, he was sentenced to three years in prison for stealing valuable corn seeds from farms in Iowa. Hold up, stealing corn? What is this, the 1400s? Well, these weren't your run-of-the-mill corn seeds. They'd been genetically modified to be replantable year after year. Think about it. If you can reuse the seeds, you've got a practically endless supply of corn. Sheesh, looks like corn's back on the menu, boys. Now, Mo was trying to get his hands on these seeds to send them to his employer, a corn company back in China. Only the seeds were a trade secret belonging to the U.S. companies DuPont, Pioneer, and Monsanto. And DuPont's estimates say this theft would have led to company losses of $30 million in five to eight years of research. Yikes. Starting to think I'm in the wrong business. Anyways, I was going to wrap this up with a seedy joke, but I'm worried you'll think I'm corny. Get it? Seedy? Corny? Oh, <laughs> forget it. Invisible Man So all this stolen tech is pretty cool, but do you want to know what's really incredible? What if I told you that China also stole something invisible? Wait, what? This is entrepreneur Li Ruping, sometimes called China's Elon Musk. He did his PhD at Duke University in North Carolina, but after completing it and returning to China, was accused of stealing an invisibility cloak from the university. Stop, there's a real-life invisibility cloak? Hold my owl, Mom, I'm going to Hogwarts! Before you get your broomstick in a bindle, though, this thing isn't invisible to the naked eye. It's invisible from certain microwave signals. The device creates a filter which shifts one frequency of light to another as it passes through the object. Once the light is passed through, it phases back to its original state. Now, that might not be useful to you or me unless you're trying to hide from that Chef Boyardee's beefaroni you're having for dinner. The real concern is how this tech could give a huge advantage to certain military technologies such as aircrafts. Because radar uses microwaves to detect enemy military activity, a stealth plane kitted with the cloaking technology in question could become completely invisible to current systems. And all Lu knew this. So when he was a student at Duke University, he convinced his superiors to allow some of his former colleagues over. When they arrived, they took photographs of plans and equipment which allowed Lu to replicate the invisibility materials back in China. Whoa. I guess just like his namesake, China's Elon Musk also made a name for himself by taking credit for other people's innovations. Ooh, burn. Bright idea. My mama always said, cheaters never win. That silly old woman's gonna be gutted when she finds out some of the biggest American retailers are making big bucks from China's thieving antics. Oh, you heard that right. In 2019, a group of researchers from the University of California, Santa Barbara, filed a lawsuit against Walmart, Amazon, Target, and Bed Bath & Beyond for selling retro-style filament light bulbs without proper authorization. The bulbs in question were developed by the university and have become incredibly popular in recent years due to their cool vintage look. Except the technology behind them is patented by the university, meaning they own the legal rights to it. So when Chinese manufacturers had the bright idea to steal the technology, produce bulbs in mass, and have Amazon sell them as their own products, the university knew something was afoot. Hold up, if China stole it, why is it the American company's fault? Well, ultimately, they're responsible for making sure the goods they sell to unwitting buyers like you and me aren't in violation of any property theft. And the technology behind the light bulb belongs to the university. Could this just be an oopsie on the retailer's part? Sure, but sales in the U.S. of these bulbs were expected to top $1 billion in 2019 alone. It seems a little convenient that they just not look into the origins of their own brand products, no? I'd say someone's not the brightest spark going. Stolen Satellites Since its launch in 1998, the International Space Station has been visited by a tremendous 266 astronauts from over 20 different countries. Surprisingly, China isn't one of those countries. In 2011, U.S. Congress actually banned China from the ISS altogether due to national security concerns. Ha! We've heard that one before, right? Actually, this one might have some justification. See, the U.S. have accused China of trying to steal satellite secrets before. In 2008, physicist Quan Xing Shu pled guilty to selling rocket technology to the communist state. 
Unsurprisingly, China denied stealing the technology, but Xu literally admitted he'd sold information regarding hydrogen-propelled rockets and cryogenics equipment. And the trend of theft didn't stop there. In 2019, Chinese national Peng Yi Li was arrested at Honolulu Airport for trying to smuggle microchips and other sensitive spacecraft components out of the U.S. and back to China. Many of these materials are banned from sale in China as they could give the country a very real advantage in military satellites and missiles. Eep. Anybody else getting uneasy flashbacks to that space balloon? Please don't let me get vaporized. I've got so much left to give. Phew. Okay, I'm alive. And just like that, we've reached the end of this genuinely terrifying video. Which of those crafty commandeerings worried you the most? Make sure to let me know in the comments down below and thanks for watching.